Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another edition of Roger Williams Park Zoo, Zoo School. I miss Jen and I bet you're noticing something pretty different about me and that's the fact that I am wearing a mask today. Now you're probably going to see a lot of folks walking around in masks. And that's okay, that's, that's what we're gonna be doing for a little while. Um, and it really, the reason we're wearing them is just to make sure we're staying extra safe around germs. So someday we won't need the masks and that's gonna be nice, but for now, I'm here, you're there, our animals are here. We are all going to be learning together like we do at every other zoo school. Now today, I'm really excited because tomorrow is a very special day and that is Earth Day. Now we have a saying here at the zoo, it's Earth Day every day. And what that means is folks that work at the zoo are always thinking about ways to help wildlife and wild places. And that's because we rely on animals and animals rely on us. We all share the same resources. So we know that as human beings, if we do our part to keep the water clean and the air clean, um, we'll be able to have access to clean water and we'll live nice healthy lives. Well, the same is true for our animals. So uh, in just a little bit, we're gonna meet two animals that are native to Rhode Island. And uh, one of them you can actually find all over the United States. It's, uh, it's everywhere. Um, and then one is native to the East Coast. So. Um, I have my friend here, his name is Armando, that's a fun name to say, and Armando is a little box turtle. You can put him down here, let him walk around. Hi buddy. He likes a little scratch on his shell sometimes. Did you know that when you touch turtles, they can actually feel it? Yeah, if you're unsure, feel your fingernail, or if you're watching this with someone else, have them feel your fingernail, and you can still feel it, right, when they touch you. Well, that's kind of how Armando's shell works, and his shell is pretty awesome. I don't know if you can see, but he has a line down the back of his shell. I'm just going to turn him here, right there. That's his backbone, and if you reach around to your back, you can feel those little bumps running down your back. That's your backbone, too. That's pretty cool, that's how we're alike. He's also got these beautiful patterns on his shell here. And if you've ever been in the forest in Rhode Island, you'll notice that there are lots of different trees and when the sun comes through the trees, it makes beautiful little patterns on the ground and that's what his shell looks like. So if Armando were walking through the woods, it would actually be kind of hard to find him because he is camouflaged. So what does that word mean, camouflage? Well, it means that animals can blend into their surroundings so they're hidden, so they're harder to find because other animals might want to eat Armando. Animals like raccoons might want to eat Armando um, or maybe even some birds of prey. And his shell is specially adapted so that he can hide from animals. That's why he gets his name, a box turtle. So I'm gonna pick him up, come on buddy. And you can see, if I just push right here very gently, he actually has a hinge that goes along the bottom of his shell. And if Armando were to get scared, he could pull his head and his legs inside and close that door right up. And that's where he gets his name, a box. It's almost like he's living in a box. Hi, buddy. I think he really likes looking at the camera. He's pretty silly. Now, box turtles like to live close to water. They don't live in water like sea turtles. They live close to water. And um, they will eat almost anything they can find. They are called opportunistic omnivores. That literally means they'll eat anything anytime. So um, they'll eat bugs, they'll eat different plants, and they'll actually, they also scavenge. That means that they eat animals that have died. So they literally clean up the forest for us. So they do a really good job. Talk about Earth Day every day. They are doing a great job for the Earth every single day. So I'm gonna put Armando back because I have another friend. I don't know if you could 
could hear our little friend. He's walking around over here. This is my friend Oliver. Hi, Ollie. Hi. Oliver is a morning dove. Now, he's not a morning dove like, get out of my room, it's morning and I want to sleep late. Morning, the other uh, meaning for the word morning can mean when you feel sad. And they get their name because the sound that they make makes them sound like they're a little bit sad. Here, you want us some skis over here? I can actually play it for you. I have it on my phone here. Oliver, what's that? Is that another dove? <laughs> the sound of morning doves is one of my favorite sounds. It's just so beautiful. And no matter if you're in the city or the country, you can hear that sound as morning doves are calling each other. Hi, bud. So right now I just have a few seeds that I'm spreading around. These seeds are called millet and it's Oliver's favorite type of seeds. Now, if you take a look at him, you can see that he has a really cool beak. It's actually long and skinny. If you ever look at a bird's beak, it is a clue that tells you how, uh, the, what kind of food they eat. So I know we've met Reba, the red-tailed hawk before, um, and Reba has a super sharp beak. Oliver has a long skinny beak and that's perfect for picking seeds up off the ground. Oliver's also camouflaged. So if he likes to live in trees and that brown color helps him hide. Now, since it's Earth Day, we have um, a special zoo school challenge for you. We really want you to just take a minute and talk with your family about ways that you can help animals right in your own backyard. So in our post, we have a link to uh, the National Wildlife Federation. They have a program where you can certify your backyard if you'd like and make sure that it's animal friendly. But even if you don't wanna certify it, there's things that you can do to help animals in your backyard. One of the ways people like to help birds is by feeding them. So just scattering seeds on the ground is a nice way to help animals like Oliver. Um, also, if you do any gardening, really trying to stay away from pesticides is important uh, because when you um, apply pesticides, it can actually take away bugs from your yard. And sometimes if you take all the bugs away from your yard, it's bad news because um, we need bugs to live like we learned last week um, and all the food chain is connected so we don't want too many bugs obviously um, there are certain things you can do to just keep bugs away when you're enjoying your yard like bug spray and stuff like that um, so if you consider your backyard as a habitat um, you can start to live really nature friendly the other thing I wanted to mention is that a lot of people ask us what they can do to help turtles like Armando Hi, little buddy. Um, so um, Armando is a box turtle. You can find them in Rhode Island, but there are a lot of different kinds of box turtles. And this time of year is when you'll see, start to see box turtles um, crossing roads because they're trying to find a place to lay their eggs. Um, if you are a kid, it's really important that you never ever touch a wild animal, um, especially um, reptiles like turtles and snakes can carry a lot of germs on them that could make you sick. Um, but uh, you also want to obviously always, always stay away from the road. But if you're a grown up and you see a turtle crossing the road, if you can safely help that turtle continue to cross in the same direction, you'll be doing that turtle a, a really great favor because um, if you put them back where they were, they'll just continue to, to keep crossing the street. So. Um, keeping an eye out for turtles crossing the street is really nice. I think Oliver's interested in that too. So um, remember, your backyard is a habitat. Your zoo school challenge for today is to think about ways that you can help the animals that are living in your backyard. And we'd love to hear about all the things you're doing in our comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning into Zoo School. And we'll see you next time.